place with no place to go. Let it snow. Hey everyone, it's the Hungry Tourist. Today I'm going to be taking you along a trip to Vancouver, Canada. Vancouver in the wintertime is an absolute dream. It's so charming and the perfect place to see snow. We drove to Vancouver from Washington, so we did cross the border. But if you are coming in from the US, it should be no big deal. Just bring your passport and leave any contraband behind. During our trip, we stayed at the Shangri-La in downtown Vancouver. This has a great location and is centered in the heart of downtown. There's all kinds of shops and restaurants around, so there is no need to use public transit when you are dining and shopping. We did bring our car, so we did do a bit of driving, but I wouldn't recommend driving downtown and parking is a pain. Most places you must pay to park. As far as accommodation, this hotel was great and very relaxing. The service was nice and staff was very helpful. Arrived at our hotel and they have some nice snacks for us a cookie and a drink a little welcome gift and a nice note so we're gonna relax a little bit unpack and then head out for dinner vancouver has some of the best food i've tasted it has a thriving food culture with many talented chefs and restauranteurs who are passionate about their craft many of these chefs have traveled to japan to learn about traditional ramen making techniques and bring their knowledge back to Vancouver. There are so many different types of restaurants in Vancouver. If you're planning a trip, I would definitely do some research before going. So we are in front of the Vancouver Art Gallery and we are checking out the huge Christmas tree. It's so nice. We noticed it on the way to our hotel. We had to stop by and see it for ourselves. We spent the rest of the night wandering around the downtown and watching the ice skaters at the UBC campus. We also checked out Gingerbread Lane at the Hyatt Hotel, which is a fun gingerbread house competition. The houses are so cute and are submitted by local schools and even professional bakers. So we just woke up and we're gonna head down to get some breakfast. The plan for the day is to go to Lynn Canyon Suspension Bridge, which is free. It's about 27 uh, minutes north of us. And then we're gonna go to see the canyon lights at the Capolino Suspension Bridge. And it's supposed to have really beautiful Christmas lights. We'll go a little bit before sunset so we can see what's around and then enjoy the beautiful lights at night. All right, see you guys later. Our hotel provided a three-course breakfast every morning, so it was really convenient just being able to walk downstairs. I knew it was going to be a really cold day, so I ordered a whole pot of tea to warm myself up in preparation for the day. We were also ill-prepared for the amount of snow in Vancouver. Lots of snow for one night! Before driving to Lynn Cannon, we wanted to try Japa Dog. It's a popular food vendor in Vancouver that sells Japanese-style hot dogs. They were so good. So we just made it to Lynn Cannon Park and we're going to go see the sus suspension bridge and check out some of the trails. Right now it's really beautiful to have some snow on the ground. Um, it's not too cold, um, but it's really beautiful. It looks like a winter wonderland. Like I said earlier, it is free of charge, but they do take a $2 donation. our way down to this bridge here. It's like a very long stairway. We're on our way to the suspension bridge and it's really gorgeous. There's these tall trees covered in snow. The park covers an area of 617 acres and is home to a temperate rainforest with a diverse range of flora and fauna. The park's main attraction is the Lynn Cannon Suspension Bridge, which stretches 50 meters across the canyon and is 50 meters above the river. The views from the bridge are spectacular and we were so lucky to have it for ourselves. So 
so we just arrived at the Capolino Suspension Bridge. Um, we're gonna enjoy the light, look around, and we have about an hour before the sun goes down and we can see all the twinkling lights. So, we're excited. Capolino Suspension Bridge is a beautiful place to visit in Vancouver, Canada, and during the Christmas season, it's especially magical. Okay, so we made it to the Suspension Bridge. We're gonna be crossing soon. Um, we wanted to check out how other people were crossing first to see if we can. Um, it looks a little shaky, but I'm not too nervous. This isn't my first suspension bridge, um, but it's really beautiful. You can see all the mist and all the lights. So we're ready to go. Oh, it's a little shaky. Shaky, actually. A little nervous. So actually, it's much shakier than I suspected. Um, if you're afraid of heights, it's probably not the place for you. But it's pretty enjoyable. Yeah, it's much shakier than I thought. It kind of rocks like that. Have them trouble there? I don't know, I'm fine. Okay. Did you know that the Capolino Suspension Bridge Park is located in a temperate rainforest in North Vancouver? The rainforest in this area is characterized by abundant rainfall, lush vegetation, and a variety of plant and animal species. So as you can see, there are lots of cool lights around. We just finished going over the, the suspension bridge and walking around a bit. And we're gonna head over to the tree canopies over here. Um, this is supposed to be one of the highlights of the trip. So I'm excited. As much fun as the suspension bridge was, my favorite part of the park was the treetop adventure. This was one of the coolest things I have ever seen. You can walk from tree to tree through bridges that are strung with lights. It's incredible and unforgettable experience. So we are on top of the rainforest, literally. We are in the canopy and you can see the lights are streamed all over the bridges. They're not too shaky. Just look at those spectacular lights. Do you know the park uses over 1.5 million lights to create a winter wonderland experience for visitors during the holiday season? And the darker the sky gets, the more magical everything looks. The suspension bridge is a highlight of the park and during Christmas, it's decorated with thousands of twinkling lights. Walking across the bridge is an unforgettable experience, and you get to enjoy the stunning views of the river and forest while feeling like you're in a winter wonderland. After the lights, we drove to Richmond for some tasty Chinese food. They have some great authentic Chinese restaurants. There are so many different types to choose from. We enjoyed our food, but our table display was even better. After we tasted our food, we could see why this place was so popular. The next morning, we decided we would go eat and then drive to Stanley Park. Stanley Park is like Vancouver Central Park, but bigger and some people would say better. <laughs> Vancouver seriously has some of the best ramen. Any time is a good time to visit Stanley Park but I think winter time is the most magical. The scenic views of the surrounding mountains and water from the park's many trails are breathtaking, and even more so in the winter when they are covered in snow. Since we have no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. The 
The winter months in Stanley Park also offer an opportunity to see wildlife that may not be visible during other times of the year. These little guys were incredible. We believe that they were tufted puffins, but maybe some type of duck. The park's natural beauty is accentuated by the winter weather. The snow-covered trees, gardens, and lakes create a serene and picturesque landscape that is unique to the winter months. It's seriously like driving in a snow globe. You're just in awe the whole time. One stop you need to make at Stanley Park is the totem poles. The totem poles are located at Brockton Point, which is a popular area of the park. There are nine totem poles in total, each with its own unique design and meaning. They were carved by First Nations artists from different parts of British Columbia, and each totem pole tells a story. The combination of natural beauty, peaceful atmosphere, winter activities, wildlife sightings, and scenic views make Stanley Park a stunning and enjoyable destination in the winter time. Good morning, everyone. This is our last day in Vancouver. We still have a lot on the list and we have a long drive home. So still trying to decide exactly what we're gonna do. But for now, we're heading down to breakfast, hopefully going skating. We still need to go to Granville and maybe get massages. So we'll see. All right, bye. One last big breakfast at the hotel, omelets with all the fixins. All right, we are making our way towards the ice skating. It's gonna be one of the last activities we do and we're very excited. I'm all bundled up. I know it's gonna be cold. Um, and I haven't been ice skating in like 10 years. So this will be interesting. <laughs> All right, so we're about to go into Robinson Square to go ice skating. It's about $5 to rent skates and you get to skate however long you want. Ooh, sounds like a party in there, I'm excited. All right, we're gonna go get our skates. And of course, we had to get one more bowl of ramen before we left. Well, that's a wrap on our Vancouver trip. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more. See you later.